Hello everyone, my name is Michael Smith and I am the CEO of Rising Tide Cybersecurity Management. I am going to be taking everybody today through um, controller area network traffic, both analyzing it, intercepting it, manipulating it, and fuzzing it. This is part one of a three-part series. So for this video, I'm going to be talking a short introduction on what is CAN or controller area network? Um, what is it? And more importantly, how do you set it up on a Kali Linux? And how do you use IC SIM or instrument cluster? Instrument cluster is a dashboard. IC SIM is the instrument cluster simulator. In the next video, I'll be taking you through capturing CAN traffic, uh, manipulating it, and being able to do a replay of the traffic. And then in part three, I'll be talking fuzzing and some advanced manipulation of CAN traffic. Okay. So this takes us to part one, which is introducing CAN and ICSIM. Now, CAN is short for controller area network. It's really a way that you take a bunch of different controllers. And that happens in automotive um, a lot. It happens inside of robotics sometimes. There are other uses for it, but you take these devices, those are called nodes, and you connect them to a bus, which means that they're all connected, similar to in networking, what you do with a hub, where all the wires are connected. The traditional way to do it is just to make one long loop like we used to do with token ring. The um, more modern way to do it is to have all of the different nodes wired back into a central hub, um, just like we would with a network hub um, in a star topology. Right? But the key here is that all of the controllers that are on that controller area network are connected to each other through some uh, dual wire system. And as a result, they can hear each other's traffic. And so they have a CAN ID, which would be a facility. So for instance, inside of a vehicle, the brakes would be one ID. The steering would be one ID. The uh, accelerator would be one ID. The speedometer would be one ID. And so when a controller wants to connect to another controller, it broadcasts this ID and a payload out across that shared bus. Okay. Now, inside of Linux, it's really cool because we have support for controller area networks. The first thing that we have is we have two kernel modules. One is just CAN, the other is VCAN. So when it CAN is for understanding controller area network traffic, it allows you to stand up a network device. And VCAN is for a virtual CAN device that lets you set up a device similar to loopback where you can have uh, software running that connects through that virtual CAN device. And then Linux also has a suite of user land programs through a software package called CAN utils or CAN utilities that allows you to um, do packet capture, inject frames um, or network packets, um, view a real-time display of traffic that's coming across. There's even one that's that's funny. It just generates random CAN packets. So that way you can intercept it. And we're going to be looking at how to set that up today for our follow-on in, in video two and video three in this series. Now, our end goal here is to install this software. And this software is called ICSIM. I talked about it before. Um, it was written by Craig Smith, and it provides you this virtual vehicle that you can drive. Um, and it does have instructions. I'll obviously put the <laughs> link down below. Um, you can take a look at it, and I'll take you through how to actually install this, get the virtual CAN device up and running, and actually use ICSIM and the controller in, um, in an environment. So here I am, and I'm logged into just a regular Kali Linux. Uh, you can say, you know, just the usual um, kind of stuff so you can see um, where we are here. Um, and in order to make this work, we need 
A, your your Kali or whatever Linux you're running on needs to be updated because we're going to download um, software from GitHub and, and then make it. And so we have a couple prerequisites that we need to satisfy to get there. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to install a couple packages to help us build. So it's just sudo apt install. And I've got a list over here because they're all, it's a pretty big list. Um, well, pretty, <laughs> pretty intricate list. Um, we want can utils. We want build essential. We should already have that, but I always check to make sure. Um, build essential gives us C compiler and make and a bunch of other um, standard libraries. Um, we want lib sdl2 dev and lib sdl2 image dev. Right, and now I have to get a little bit of an update. A couple things that are not related, but that's okay there. All right, but you see I grabbed my SDL. Now, the command that I just used, um, build essential gives me compilers and make and things like that. LibSDL2 gives me the, um, it's, a, it's a library that's used to make, displays and things it's for um it's for video games and other types of of displays um behind the scenes and then libsdl2 image dev gives us that graphics um, the ability to actually display graphics and that's used by ic sim in order to make this interface and you'll see what that looks like here in a minute now the next thing we want to do is go grab ic sim so you need get if you don't have it. So it's just get um, clone and then right click here. Place clipboard. Hopefully that worked right. OK. And so I'll just grab it with get. It's a small download. Believe it or not, the build on this has been amazingly reliable for me. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Now I want to CD into IC sim. All right, and you'll see there, there's a make file. Um, the first thing we want to do is we want to run make. And that will build some software for us fairly quick. Hasn't bombed out on me yet, knock on wood. Um, but what you'll see here is that we make IC sim, we make controls. And so if we do an LS again, you'll see I have two executables. One is IC sim and the other is controls. Okay. The last thing that we need to do here for this to work is we need to set up a virtual network device. And you'll see cheat mode in life. There's a setup vcan.sh. And if we do cat setup vcan.sh, what you'll see is how we actually set up the Linux side of it. So we mod probe can. So we install the kernel module for can. We install we mod probe vcan, so we install that virtual can device driver. Then we add a device named vcan0, that is a virtual can device, and then we turn it on. <laughs> so we 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 it's called setup, but we turn it we turn that device on. So if we do um, setup vcan.sh Okay, it ran. Now if I do if config, what you will see is that I have this vcan0 device that's up and running. Now in order to make the um, IC sim run, we will go in and we will just do dot slash uh, IC sim vcan mm, vcan0 and we use the ampersand in order to get us back to our shell. That way it doesn't lock the shell. It runs that process in the background. So we come here and just hit return and we get our shell back. So this is the actual instrument cluster simulator here. And you'll see we've got a vehicle. We've got a couple turn signals. They might be not that easy to be seen um, because it's all dark. And then we have the speedometer. Then the next thing that we want to do is we run around the controls. 
and we do controls vcan zero and I run that and it gives us controls. Now this was made to use a, um, I think it was a PS3 or a PS4, um, so PlayStation controller um, as a USB device. You don't really need that. You can use the keyboard shortcuts um, and you'll see it's right here. Accelerate is the up arrow. So if we push the up arrow and hold it, I'm holding it because when I let go of the up arrow, the, the speedometer goes back to zero. So if you hold up the up arrow, the speed increases, increases until it gets up right around 95, 98, I believe, uh, miles per hour. And, and then it stops. So there's a limiter that's set there. And then you let go of it and the speedometer slowly goes down to zero. While that's happening, the left arrow, so you see down here, turn left and right. So if you hit the left arrow, that turns on our left blinker. The right arrow turns on the right blinker. And there is no way that I know of to turn on the, the four-way flasher, so the left and the right simultaneously. And then the doors themselves are a little bit confusing. Over here, it says lock left shift and unlock, which is right shift. So that's on your keyboard. If you hit the right shift key, and then down here you have doors, which is X, A, B, Y. If you hit the right shift and do A, you'll see that that car or the automobile turns red and the left front door is unlocked. And if we hit, um, that was A, B, Y, X. So I've unlocked them all. And now I type the left shift key, A, X, B, Y. And we unlocked all of the doors. Or we locked, excuse me, we locked all of the doors. Now, Can Utils gives us a, a, some resources that we can use. So I'm going to clear this, clear my screen here. And let's go start understanding some can traffic. So we have three core utilities that we can use. The first one is can sniffer dash C and you, which is which can device do you want to listen to? And we give it vcan zero, which is our virtual can device. And that's similar to like a wired shark or a TCP dump. It's grabbing all of the traffic that is coming across that virtual CAN device. And you'll see it's fairly chatty. Now, out of that, there are a couple things. Um, one is um, this number that's here. So I'm going to control C there. Um, here in this column two is going to be the actual CAN ID. Um, so the ID corresponds to some kind of a utility such as brakes, such as speedometer, such as turn signal. And then everything on the right hand side here is the actual payload in hexadecimal. And whoops, it goes all the way to 38. So that's the payload in hexadecimal. And then this over here on the right hand side is what it breaks out to in ASCII, right? which a lot of times doesn't really make sense because it's not, it's not trying to send ASCII. It's just, it's trying to send the actual value of 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 a register registry or a uh, setting okay and so you'll see that um, this part over here on the left I believe is the timing um, and so you'll see different different timings um, this becomes more evident in when we start dumping traffic where it will dump the epic the unix epic time okay um, so that again is can sniffer and you just do can sniffer dash C and then whatever your can device is. Another program that's there is can dump dash C V can zero. So same thing. It is on um, can dump and then which dash C is which virtual can device or which can device that you're listening on. That dumps everything in a little bit different format. So what you'll see here is you get 
um, the virtual CAN device. So it's which device was it listening on? The CAN ID, um, the length, and then the payload. So you see this is four and oh, it's four, um, four, four pairs of hex wide, okay, or four bytes. And then the last utility that we need to talk about is one called can send. And with can send, you have, you send can send to which can device, and then the, uh, the can ID, and then the actual payload that you want to send, okay? And that will send that um, that will send that particular frame with that particular value. So it says here's the can ID. It uses the pound sign or the hash sign as a delineator, and then here is the payload. So if I say uh, something like um, f. So I'll put a spurious F in there. I'll close out my um, my controller. And now if I send that, oh, it didn't like that. Oh, I might have one too many. There we go. Okay, so I just manipulated the speedometer. I'm gonna move it down here. Close up my terminal a little bit. Okay, send zero. And let's send like F zero zero out the speedometer because I went too far. Um, let me send something like two. Okay. Um, don't worry about what values I put in there. I'll show you where these values actually come from. Um, but just understand that you can use can send in order to send a particular frame out across the wire. And that's it for the introduction to CAN and Instrument Cluster Simulator. Join me for video two when we start talking about packet capture, manipulating those packet captures, sending, a, um, sending our own frames or packets, and then definitely join me for video three when we start talking about some of the fuzzing and some of the advanced manipulation and analysis of traffic. Until then, this is Mike Smith and I've enjoyed having you here. Be sure to watch this playlist. Be sure to like, subscribe, all of that stuff. And I will see you in the next video.